So today, uh, now I'm just gonna go ahead and like kind of pick up off of a bit of from like Jay's talk from yesterday. Um, Jay gave like a really good general overview over Cosmos and like interchain communication. So this is gonna be a much more like technical talk, I'd say, on like IBC, which is our inter-blockchain communication protocol. Um, and it'll be kind of showing a bit of, uh, you know, some of our latest thinking on how this uh, entire process is gonna work. So, um, you know, first off, you know, uh, to overview a little bit of what Jay said, why interoperability? Um, so the internet was basically, you know, created to connect these independent and relatively isolated networks uh, and create like this standard protocol that will allow these independent networks and siloed <laughs> networks to communicate with each other. And this is what the internet protocol was, or IP. Um, and you know, we have this like, Cosmos has this like tagline called like the internet of blockchains. And you know, it's more than just this like marketing term. It's like, it was a very like specific like design goal that we do. And like a lot of our uh, designs for Cosmos and IBC are very heavily inspired by the design of the uh, traditional internet protocols. Um, so why do we need this interoperability? The main thing that we're trying to go for here is there is sort of assets are on, their, on different blockchains and each blockchain has like these isolated innovations that they're working on and there's no way for me to use uh, the innovations of another blockchain with the assets of a current blockchain. One common question is like, you know, is this similar to atomic swaps? And so the difference between atomic swaps and uh, IBC is atomic swaps is just two people uh, exchanging tokens uh, in a trustless atomic way, but it doesn't actually allow assets to move between chains. If I have like $5 worth of Bitcoin, uh, atomic swaps allows me to get like $5 worth of ether easily but it doesn't actually let me move my Bitcoin onto the Ethereum blockchain. So the problem with Peace Relay was, uh, you know, it's very EVM specific. Uh, it was sort of a hackathon project basically. Um, and it didn't work uh, general purpose across like many chains. Um, and it doesn't handle like complex timeouts and error handling. So for example, you know, let's say I took my ETC and put it on the, uh, like locked it up in the Ethereum Classic chain, but you know, the Ethereum blockchain is like completely censoring me because I don't know, they don't like me. Um, what, then what happens is my ETC is like stuck in this like in transit limbo process and it's like, it, it doesn't exist on either the ETC chain or the uh, Ethereum chain. There's no way to like get it out on either chain. So we wanna have like some sort of like timeout mechanism so tokens don't get like locked up in, in transit by accident. Um, it doesn't also like, it also didn't like define common standards for how to parse packets. Like, you know, it, it was very specifically designed for this one use case that we had in mind. Like I think we hard coded in the Ethereum and Ether, Ethereum classic addresses we were trying to use. Um, and the final thing is that like clients for proof of work are very computationally difficult to implement on chain. So, you know, we didn't actually do that uh, the light client proof, we kind of just, for the hackathon project, we kind of just assumed that the header was correct. So, you know, the benefit of this entire thing is that these tenement light clients make it very easy to do these on-chain verifications. Um, you, it's basically verifying a tenement header is almost like roughly as uh, complicated as like verifying a multi-sync. It's about the same computational overhead. Um, so yeah. Now let's get into IBC. So basically, we have the we have this ability to write these efficient on-chain light clients, and so we have two chains, chain A and chain B, and you want to now base chain B is running an on-chain uh, light client of uh, chain A. The question is, how does it actually you know get to know the blocks of chain A? Um, if, if I, in a light client situation, you know, how I get it is I'm asking a full node, like, hey, I, I'm pulling the pull node, pulling the full node, like, hey, give me the latest block. But, you know, the, a blockchain, chain B, doesn't have the ability to act, go out and ask a full node. Uh, so what we instead have is we have these, like, relayers, which are basically people who are incentivized to relay uh, headers over from one chain to the other. 
So a real error will see will see a header of chain A and send it and push it as a transaction. Uh, say by the, to, to chain B, it will run a transaction saying, "Hey, this is the latest header on chain A." And B can you know get this header. It can verify it and say, "Okay, yes, these signatures are correct." You know maybe if a real error is like sending over false blocks, it can like punish it somehow, but like, you know, the real layer's paying a fee in order to put that transaction on chain, so maybe we don't need that. Um, so yeah, this like idea of this like, and you know, this same thing could go the other way. Chain B uh, could also, the same real layers will probably be incentivized to like move headers from chain B to uh, chain A. And so the, what we call, our abstraction of this is called an IBC connection. It's basically a two-way block header uh, transmission buffer where you send the block headers between the chains. So you know, A is keeping track of the headers of B, and B is keeping track of the headers of A. Um, a single chain might have IDCC connections to multiple chains. So for example, the Cosmos Hub has like connections to many other blockchains. We'll get into the Cosmos Hub later. Um, and so basically what it will be doing is it'll each chain should keep a mapping basically of chain IDs to the latest trusted uh, validator hash. And you know you can send these headers over it. And over a header, once, once the other blockchain has a header, you can send it some sort of proof carrying data. And so you can use these uh, IBC connections. The purpose is to like move these uh, headers back and forth. But the packets actually don't go over the connections directly we have another abstraction called IBC channels, which uh, are these one-way uh, buffers, basically. Um, you know, in Golang, you could like, it, it's, uh, the, yeah, they're called channels, right? In channels where you can, it's a one-way thing where you put something in and it comes out the other side. Um, using the internet analogy, you can kind of think of these as similar to network ports. So, you know, I may have a connection, IP connection to uh, your uh, computer, but you know, we don't shove everything over one connection. We have these different ports, and these different ports can be like communicating over different protocols. Maybe one of our ports is one of our port pairs is com communicating over like TCP, while another one's communicating over UDP. They can be talking about different things. Um, and so the reason we don't want we, we want the ability to have these like many channels is that um, with multiple channels, like. We want each channel to basically relay headers um, in sequence, uh, but you know, not everything needs to be done sequentially. Maybe I can have a specific channel that's designed for token transfers, while another one is designed for um, you know governance transactions. So I want to I want to send a vote from one blockchain to another blockchain. That doesn't need to be like totally ordered with uh, my token transfers. So you can use these multiple channels for. Uh, some parallelization. And like I said, each of these channels could have uh, different operation modes. So, you know, UDP style, um, if you're sending data from one blockchain to another, you don't really care if it doesn't get like, uh, get to the other side. You, you can just like, if it doesn't get to the other side, a user can observe that and just like rebroadcast it again and again until it gets through. Um, but, you know, maybe there are some things that you do want. Uh, guaranteed transmission. So if you want to go in, if you want to start building like sharding like systems where you want thing, you want like uh, atomicity between of transactions where like you know you make sure it gets executed on the other side, then you do want to start using some like TCP style uh, channels. I'm convinced. I'm not. I haven't like modeled this yet, but I'm pretty sure we can like model like all of the different forms of sharding and like transfers and stuff like by like playing with like what the definition of timeouts are and what the failure mode of timeouts are. So like, you know, uh, Vlad talked about his sharding today earlier. Um, I'm pretty sure his sharding is basically just this in which you don't have timeouts and you just say, we will halt everything until we like get a return uh, message. And then the final thing is just uh, about hubs. Uh, so, you know, we were giving this giant internet analogy um, and the last piece of this is how do these uh, IBC, what is the topology of the network um, of blockchains connecting to other blockchains? Um, th 
theoretically, you could have like every blockchain connecting to every other blockchain in a very like mesh network like way, peer to peer. But you know, we've seen in the internet that this just generally tends to not happen. It doesn't scale very well. Um, the Cosmos Hub, as well as you know, other hubs that emerge in this ecosystem, are basically the equivalent of the internet service providers, uh, where they basically say that okay, instead of every zone having to connect directly to every other zone, they can all connect to one blockchain, and we will connect you to everyone else. And this is like really good because you know. Other, instead of having n squared connections where each blockchain connects to everyone else, you can have on the order of n connections where like everyone connects to one hub and then the hub connects everyone to everyone else. Um, and you know this isn't you know it may sound like a bit like centralization, but you know the, the Cosmos hub is supposed to be a and other hubs are supposed to be these like decentralized distributed systems. So yeah. Um, and the other thing is that hubs also provide like other services. So you know you have your ISP and they provide you services like uh, you know the routing basically. But oftentimes your ISPs also provide like secondary services like cloud hosting or DNS resolution. And so over time the like these hubs will also evolve to offer these separate services as well. So a hub may say like okay we'll do shared security. Where you know will will if you don't want to bring your own validator set, we'll be we'll provide you a validator set. Or you know maybe they'll provide like plasma functionality. Where okay you have your own validator set, but we we can be this like arbitration system for you. Or you know DNS systems, identity systems. Like there will be like basically competition between hubs in order to like provide the best services basically. And we're not gonna do that. Cool. <laughs>